For the following exercises, find the point of intersection of each pair of lines if it exists. If it does not exist, indicate that there is no point of intersection. All right. So first thing is I had a, uh, I just did a video uh, basically exactly on this topic. I went into a, a lot of detail on it. What I'm going to do here is leave a link in the description and probably on the screen as well. Um, to check out that video, I'm going to basically piggyback off of that. All right. So the concepts are explained thoroughly in that prior video. Um, and I'm going to apply them here. Okay. So um, also, by the way, this video is part of a playlist. So if you check out our channel, if you go to like the linear equations playlist, you'll be able to find this video and it's the video before that. Okay. Anyway, let's get down to it. So the first thing is if I have to figure out whether there are any points of intersection or no points of intersection or an infinite number of points of intersection, the first thing is I have to set these both up in y equals mx plus b4. All right. So uh, I'm going to take the 2x is equal to y minus 3. And let's set it up into y is equal to mx plus b. So I realize that y is already on one of the sides. Um, and let me write that down. y is equal to mx plus b. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take uh, 3 and then I'm going to add it to the left hand side. All right. And what that gives me now is it's going to give me 2x plus 3 is equal to y. And remember, I can just flip it around. So y is equal to then 2x plus 3. So I have that now in my y equals mx plus b form. Let's take that and we'll basically shrink it down. And I'm going to put it right over here. Okay. Now, same thing. Let's do that for the second equation. All right. Put that one maybe in blue. So we have y plus then 4x is equal to 15. Subtract the 4x on over to the right hand side. And we realize that we're going to get a value of y is equal to negative 4x plus 15. All right, great. So we got both of these now in y equals mx plus b form. Take this and resize it slightly. And I'm going to put it right over here. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do, well, first I'm going to clean up this area a little bit. Next thing I have to do is determine whether these two equations that I just wrote out here are identical or not. Are they identical? Meaning are they exactly the same? The answer is no. So knowing that they're not identical, that means that they do not have an infinite number of points in common. Okay, if they were exactly identical, they would have an infinite number. The next thing I have to determine is whether these two lines have identical slopes, just, just the slopes. Are the slopes just identical? Okay, and if the slopes are identical, but the overall equation is not identical, basically that would mean that the slope, that the equations here would have different y-intercepts, okay? Uh, then the uh, answer would have been that there are no points of intersection. So parallel line, and that's all explained in the prior video, parallel lines that have uh, not the same y-intercepts, meaning that they're not identical, um, are going to have no points of intersection. Every other case then will have one point of intersection. So I know that these two equations here do not fall into those two categories, and therefore uh, they will have one point of intersection. So now, how do we find that particular point? Well, it turns out that, remember, um, this the y value in the first equation is going to be identical to the y value in the second equation. Because wherever these two lines intersect, right, wherever they intersect, I'll draw a black line for that, blue line for, for this, I'm making it up. Wherever they intersect, this particular point is in common. This has an x and a y coordinate to it, and that is the same for the blue line and for the black line. So I know that whatever this y is, this y is whatever this x is, this x must be at this point here. Okay. And what that now allows me to do, what that realization allows me to do is, whoops, went back a little too far, right? What that allows me to do is now realize again, that if this y is identical to this y, then whatever those y's are equal to are also identical to each other. In other words, 2x plus 3 must equal then, must equal negative 4x plus 15, right? Also, you can view this as like a substitution, okay? So for example, if this y is equal to this mumbo jumbo, then I can take this mumbo jumbo, okay, and plug it in for this y in this equation. And that would give me exactly this, okay? 
By the way, there's many ways to solve equations like this. I'm showing you kind of like a substitution method, which is um, a very useful method to know, especially as you move on in math. This substitution, if you move on to math and physics and whatnot, it'll, it, it'll help you out tremendously. All right. The other ways to do it are to like add these two equations up and, you know, find that that's fine, but it's, it's a limited method. So I, let's take the road less traveled. All right. Now, I love this because I have one unknown. And remember that whatever the X is in the black equation was equal to whatever the X is in the blue equation. So I know that they're identical to one another. Okay, when the, where they intersect. All I gotta do to now is solve this for X. All right, so I'm gonna add the four on over to the left-hand side, the four X that is. Okay, that would give me six X. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract now the three. I'm gonna do this all in one step, right? I'm gonna subtract the three on over then to the right. Okay, notice how this would have canceled. That part would have canceled. And now I'm left with then, right, 15 minus 3 would have been 12. And now here's my lovely little equation. Divide both sides by 6, and x will be equal to 2. So now we found our x value. Okay? So that is one of the two coordinates. Let's erase this. That's one of the two coordinates of the point of intersection. Okay? Let's put that over here. Now remember, how do we find, remember every point, right? I drew a graph like this, boom, boom, boom. And then we had something like that. I'm looking for the coordinates of that point. Every point has a coordinate, has two coordinates, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, assuming it's two dimensional, okay? Assuming we're not doing three dimensional stuff here, which we're not yet. But if you do continue with math, you will, you will definitely see that. So. What I now know is that I need to solve then for the y coordinate of this point right here. Okay, how do we do that? Well, this part turns out to be very, very, very easy. Remember, both of these equations are going to essentially spit out the same y value if we plug in the same x value. So it doesn't matter which equation we choose, watch, they're gonna work on both, okay? So let's say I choose the first equation, y is equal to two x plus three. And I plug in my x value. So 2 for x, I solve it for y, 4 plus 3 is 7. So y is equal to 7. Watch what happens if I take the blue equation, I do the same thing. y is equal to negative 4x now, plus 15. So y is then going to be equal to negative 4 times 2, plus 15. So this is y is equal to now negative 8, plus 15. What does that work out to be? OMG-ness, it works out to be 7. See, I get the same answer. So guess what the point of intersection is? If this is the x point, excuse me, the coordinate, and this is the y coordinate, then the point of intersection was 2 comma 7. That's the point of intersection. And if you were to actually graph these two out, okay, kind of like the graph I showed you before, rewind the video to check it out again, you realize that I was around the area. I was around it, okay? Um... That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay. So now watch. We're going to apply this and we're going to see how fast we can go through these next two. All right. So first thing is I want to get this into y equals mx plus b form. I know it's a linear equation because I'm dealing with an x and a y. They're added or subtracted to one another and they're both raised to the first power. Explain that in the other video as well. So let's write it out. x minus 2y plus 2 is equal to 3. Combine like terms first. Subtract the 2 on over to the right hand side. So we get x minus 2y is going to be equal to 1. Bring the x on over to the right-hand side, because remember the whole goal here is to get it in the form y equals mx plus b. So i got to solve it for y. So now it's going to be negative 2y is going to be equal to negative x plus 1. And divide both sides by negative 2. Okay, so y we realize now here is going to be, remember there's a hidden coefficient in front of the x there. I can distribute the negative 2 to each term in that numerator. So basically now this will work out to be positive one half x, then minus now one half, okay? And this is, looks like a z, and this is now our equation. Same thing, it's just algebraically reworked as the first one, right? So maybe I'll leave it there for, I'll leave it there for now. Let's erase some of this, okay? And we're gonna bring that a little more front and center. Okay, that was the first one. Let's do now the second equation. I'll put it in blue. So x minus y is equal to 3. 
So subtract the x on over to the uh, right hand side. So we get negative y is equal to negative x plus 3. And divide each side by negative 1. So we're going to get y is then equal to basically positive x now minus 3. Okay. Once we get our equations in y equals mx plus b form, we want to first see if they are indeed identical to one another. So my question is, are those two equations there in the boxes? And I'm just going to clean it up. Are they identical? Do they look identical? No, right? They're not identical, which means that they do not have an infinite number of points. Next thing to identify is, do they have the same slope? The slope here, you might be saying, well, where the heck's the slope? Remember, there's an invisible one there right in front of the x. So do they have the same slope here? One half and one? No. So this will have one point of intersection, that means. Okay, these two graphs will have one point of intersection. Take out your calculator and graph it. Okay, check it out. Now, how am I going to solve this? Again, same thing. Basically, once you have it in y equals mx plus b form, take this part of this equation and set it equal to this part of that equation. So it's going to now look like 1 half x minus 1 half is equal to then x minus 3. I'm just going to leave out the 1. Okay. So now combine like terms. All right, I'm going to subtract my x on over to the right hand side. Now you could have done it the opposite. It really doesn't matter. When 1 half, minus, 1 half x minus 1 x is going to be negative 1 half x. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add now the 1 half all at the same time in the same line. Add the 1 half then on over to the right hand side. Notice the x's here cancel. The 1 halves will cancel. And we're left with then the negative 1 half x will equal now 3, basically 3.5, right? Oh, excuse me. Negative 2.5, sorry. It'll basically be equal to negative 2.5. Okay, if you want to leave it in fractional form, uh, if you want to leave it in decimal form there, that's fine. Right, the other way to to, uh, to look at, uh, to do that would be negative 5 over 2. Okay, that would be negative 2.5. So now, how do I solve for x? Again, you can basically just now take the left-hand side, multiply it by the same reciprocal, the same sign, because you got to cancel that negative, but the reciprocal of the fraction, so negative 2 over 1, do that negative 2 over 1 on the right, and then voila, we're going to end with x now is going to be equal to, and we can now do this math out, right? So negative times the negative is going to be positive, 5 times the 2 is going to be a 10 over 2, and we know that that will simplify down to now 5. So x is indeed 5, okay? Beautiful. So now that we know x is 5, how can we find the y? You might say, oh, I remember, just go plug it in. Yeah, you're right, either equation now. Either equation, does not matter. Why don't we do the second equation? Why? Well, because who likes fractions? Not I, not I. So y is equal to, uh, or not me. I don't know. This is math, not English. So y is equal to x minus 3. All right, so y then will be equal to 5 minus 3. Look at how beautifully easy this is, and y is equal to 2. So we have now our coordinates. We have the point of intersection. The point of intersection will be 5, 2. Graph it out, and you'll realize that this is the point. Cool. Now, let's take a look at that third example. This one I'm going to move through even faster. So, ready? Put that into y equals mx plus b form. So 5x plus 3y is equal to negative 65. Subtract the 5x on over to the right. And we're going to get 3y is equal to the negative 5x uh, minus 65. Divide both sides by 3. Great. And here we're going to realize that y will be equal to negative 5 thirds x. And this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in, um, in uh, decimal form. All right, so take negative 65, divide it by 3. So it's about negative 21 and 2 thirds, essentially. I'm just going to write negative 21 point Eh. You can leave it as 21.7 or so. I'm going to just write 21 and um, two-thirds, okay? Yeah, who likes that? Nobody likes fractions. So, point, I'll, I'll, okay, yeah, well, move on. All right, cool. That's the first one. Now let's do the same thing for the second equation, okay? So I'm going to take this now. Let's just move this. I might resize it. Boom. That's the first equation. Now let's do it for the second. So we get x minus y. It's a funky looking y. x minus y is equal to negative 5. Okay, subtract the x on over to the right hand side. And we realize negative y will then be equal to negative x minus 5. Divide both sides by negative 1. 
Distribute that negative one then to each term in the numerator on the right hand side. And we're going to now get uh, x plus five. All right, next thing we have to do then is check whether these equations, these two equations are indeed identical to one another. And are they? Uh, yeah, no, all right? So they're not identical. Do they have even the same slopes at all? Remember there's a hidden one in front of the x? No, all right. So that means they're gonna have one point in common. How do we solve that? We basically set, remember these two parts of the equations equal to one another. So I'm not gonna really color code this one too much. So here it's gonna be negative five over three x minus 21.67 will be equal to then x plus five. Solve it, all right? So let's combine the like terms and let's see what we can do. So why don't we subtract the x on over to the uh, uh, left-hand side? Doesn't matter which way you go. That'll cancel that x. Let's then add at the same time the 20 because I have to isolate x on it by itself. So I gotta bring that on over to the right-hand side. Add the 21.67 on over. Great. And now we're gonna combine the like terms, right? You can plug this into your calculator if you like. It's basically gonna be a negative um, eight over three x is then going to be equal to them. Well, that you don't really need to plug into the calculator, right? So that's going to be 26.67 and then multiply. Let me move this up slightly. And then we'll, all we're going to have to do is then just, whoops. All we're going to have to do is then multiply both sides by the reciprocal then of the eight thirds, keep the negative sign. So it's three over eight now, and then take this and multiply it by negative three over eight. Okay, that whole side cancels, except for the x, and plug that on into the calculator. So, ba -ba boom. So let's see, let's uh, take that and we're going to, hold on one second. I'm just, okay. All right, great, and then multiply that now by negative uh, three over eight. So I get an answer of exactly now, negative 10. Now you might have, the reason why I got exactly negative 10 is because I'm plugging in then the exact values into my calculator, all right? Or I'm using the exact values. I'm actually using the 21 point, point six, 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 uh, when I used it over here, all right? Um, but in any case, if you use the rounded value here, you realize that you would be very, 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 very close to negative 10. So just know it's negative 10, okay? Um, so that is what X is. Okay, great. Now that that's what X is, how do we find Y? Well, use either equation. Which one do you want to use? Yeah, me too, right? Let's use the blue one. X plus five, right? So Y is equal to then negative 10 plus five. Oh my goodness, we love this, it's so easy. Y is equal to negative five. And what are the coordinates now of the point? The point will be negative 10 comma negative five. Voila. Guys, thank you very, very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Remember, we got a ton more videos out there. All right. Actually, we're very close to a ton, except not in weight, but in terms of number. Uh, we got about 2000 almost videos. All right. And um, we have them organized in terms of playlists. So please check out our channel. Go to the playlist section and you'll see everything categorized. So if you're having trouble with linear equations, go to linear equation playlist. We have tons of solved problems, all right? And thank you so very much. And if this helped you out at all, give us a hand. Hit the subscribe button, like button, maybe even tell your friends. We appreciate it. Be well.